Welcome to your video on the zero product property. We'll start off by just answering this simple question, what exactly is the zero product property? First, let me tell you that oftentimes we won't say the zero product property, we will just refer to it as the ZPP. And this is a property that we will be using for weeks to come. So here's what the property looks like. It says if A times B is equal to zero, then either A equals zero or B equals zero. So what this means is if you have a product of two numbers, the only way to get zero is one of those two numbers has to be zero. And so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be extending that into um, products of binomials. So let me show you what this means. To answer the next question, what do we actually use the ZPP for? Um, we are going to be solving equations that have a degree that is greater than one. So up until this point, the only equations that you have been able to solve have been linear equations where you can get an x and isolate it and get it by itself. If you have, say, an x squared or an x cubed, you can't just use opposite operations to isolate the x. So we're going to have to do something that's called factoring, and then we're going to apply the zero product property. When we solve an equation, what we are actually finding are the x-intercepts. And two other names for x-intercepts that you'll hear commonly used are zeros or roots. So the zeros of an equation, the roots of an equation, and the x-intercepts all mean the same thing. So we're solving equations, we're using the zero product property, all to connect it back to a graph and to find the x-intercepts. So let's talk about what these two different types of graphs look like. Um, we've been working with linear graphs up until this point, and a linear graph is just a line, and we can easily find the x-intercept by just using opposite operations. When we get to a quadratic equation, that graph is called a parabola, and it makes a U-shape. Um, for now, we're just going to look at just a very general, basic parabola. So for our purposes, we don't have to have exact points. Now, when we solve the equation using the ZPP, what we're trying to find are the two x-intercepts. So let's mark those as special points. And you'll notice that a quadratic does have two x-intercepts. Now hopefully something jogs in your mind. Quadratic was the word that we used when we talked about an expression that had a degree of two. So quadratic had a degree of two and now it has two x-intercepts. And let me tell you, that is not a coincidence. Another type of equation that we'll be looking at over the next couple of days is a cubic equation. And a cubic is kind of a snake-like graph or a sideways S. Um, it'll go up and down and then back up again. So it kind of has three turns. If you mark the x-intercepts, you will notice that there are three of them. And again, that connection is there. Cubic referred to something that had a degree of three or the highest exponent of three. And now, the equation would have three x-intercepts. So here is how we're going to put all of this together and work some examples. For each example, we're going to solve the equation, and then we're just going to, once we have those solutions, use those solutions to make a graph. So you'll notice that we have the product of two binomials. So this looks like a FOIL problem, although we are not going to be FOILing. Instead, we're going to use the language of the ZPP, and we're going to identify these two binomials as A and B. So if you recall, the zero product property said if A times B is equal to zero, then either A is zero or B is zero. So we're going to figure out exactly those equations. So let's take our A, which is the binomial x minus 4. That could equal zero, and we'll go ahead and solve that right away. And it's just simple opposite operations at this point. Add 4 to both sides, and x equals 4. So that's one possibility. But then our second intercept is going to come from the b part of our equation. So we'll set that up, and we'll say that x plus 3 equals 0. We'll solve that by subtracting 3 from both sides, and we'll determine that our other solution is x equals negative 3. Now, x can't be 4 and negative 3 at the same time. That's not what we're saying. What we're saying is that this graph has two x-intercepts. So if you just go ahead and make some tick marks on your graph, and I know you don't have the graph in your notes, but just draw a little sketch in there. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, we are looking for a U-shaped graph because this has two factors. There's, there's two X's, so a degree of two. 
And then you just mark your solution. So we'll go to 4, 0, and we'll go to negative 3, 0. And those are the x-intercepts, and that's what's going to determine the shape of the graph. And for now, even though there's a lot more to it, you're just going to draw a U-shaped graph. It um, doesn't matter exactly where, the, where it bottoms out. Just make sure that it passes through those zeros. We're just in the very early stages of graphing. But we want to just make sure that you know why you're solving. We're trying to find those x-intercepts. Let's look at another one. We again have two binomials. We're going to label the first one A and the second one B. And we're going to apply the zero product property to set up two equations. Okay, this one's a little different. Um, we're going to have to do a couple of steps here to get x by itself. We'll start by adding 1 to both sides. So we have 2x equals 1. And then divide both sides by 2. So x is 1 half. And fractions are okay. We can have an x-intercept that crosses at a half. We'll set up our second equation by using our second binomial in the problem. So x plus 3 equals 0. We'll subtract 3 on both sides. And we'll get our second solution, which is x equals negative 3. Those are the x-intercepts, or the zeros. So we are, again, going to just make a little grid here and mark those in. So we have x equals 1 half. You just have to put that, obviously, halfway between 0 and 1. And then x equals negative 3. And again, just draw a general U-shape, putting those zeros on the end to show that it continues on. Our next example is kind of an extended version of the ZPP. You will see that we actually have three things that we're multiplying together, three factors. So we're going to start by labeling the first two A and B just like we used to, and now we're going to call our third one C. And same rules apply. If you multiply a bunch of things together and you get an answer of zero, one of your things had to be zero. So you're going to take each of your factors and set them equal to zero. So our first one is x equals zero. And we're actually done. We don't have to do any work. We just know that that's one of our solutions. Our second equation is going to be taking that second factor and setting it equal to 0. Once we've done that, we'll solve it by subtracting 1 from both sides. And we have another solution. But we still have one more equation that needs to be set up. When we set our third factor equal to 0 and solve, we get yet another x-intercept. And this one is x equals 2 thirds. So obviously we're not going to have the same type of a shape. There's no way to make that parabola or that u-shape using three x-intercepts. But we approach it the same way. So we're going to mark 0 as a point. We're going to mark negative 1 as a point. And then 2 thirds. So we kind of have a tiny little scale here, but that's okay. Now, when you have three x-intercepts, if you remember, that's a cubic graph. So that's kind of the snake-like graph or the sideways s. It just goes up, down, and then back up. Okay? So we had three factors. We had three x's. So we had three x-intercepts. Our final example hopefully looks familiar from your FOIL work. We, we have a binomial that is squared, and our first step is going to be to rewrite that. When we square something, that just means we multiply it by itself. So we've got x minus 3 and x minus 3. So you can see how this fits the other examples. We have our a, we have our b, and we're going to set up our two equations. But hopefully some of you are thinking right now, well, why would we set up two equations? It's going to just be the same, and you're exactly right. So it's x minus 3 equals 0, we're going to add 3 to both sides, and we get x equals 3. But our second one, the b, is just going to look the exact same way. So you'd add 3 to both sides, and you get x equals 3. So we have two x-intercepts, but they actually just happen at the same spot. Um, we call that, in math, we call that a repeated solution. So we've accounted for two answers, but um, they just end up being the same. So on this graph, what's going to happen is we just mark the single point, and then whenever your x-intercept just turns out to be one number, that means that's where the vertex of your parabola is. So it's just going to come down and touch the x-axis at 3, and then just open upwards like that. So again, these are not like perfectly exact graphs, but what we're really trying to focus on is just the connection between solving the equation and the fact that those solutions are your x-intercepts. 
This concludes your video and you may now start your practice on the zero product property.